everyone, and welcome back to Daisy Styles. Today's video is going to be another homage like tag update, and this one is number 12. But just before this video begins, I'm very excited to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Bend Break and Recreate. It is a model horse customizing channel run by this couple, Sean and Kathy. They're quite new to the platform, so they currently only have one video. But after I watched it, I was more than happy to do this sponsorship because I was really impressed. They work together to create custom model horses, and I'm honestly really excited to see what they will create in the future. And if you get a chance to, make sure you bend it, break it, and recreate it. I really think these guys will continue improving and make great content. And I certainly encourage all of you guys to head over there and click the subscribe button so you don't miss when they make new content. Anyways, we're doing a tag update, so let's get to that. We're going to start with the Christmas themed tag as I made a couple of those this year. I made this little festive leather halter mostly for photo shoots, but I think it's just adorable. The nose band is made with red leather and it's decorated with some fake bells and decorations. It has two adjustable buckles on either side made with golden wire, although I'm not really sure it was the best choice. The gold color on this wire is more yellowy, which almost makes it look a little bit tacky. I just wish it was more copper colored, but what can you do? <laughs> on top of that, I didn't have the clips in gold, so I had to use a silver one, which just does not match but I'll just take pictures from this side and it looks fine. <laughs> Overall, I think it's a really fun and festive halter and I'll definitely use it next Christmas too. The next festive item is this glittery wreath. The base is made of glittery pipe cleaners and it's decorated with this big red bow with glitter on it and some fake bells, a real bow, and also some candy canes, pine cones, and holly berries. This one was lots of fun to make. I really enjoyed making the little candy canes and the pine cones, and I think the result is really cute. Here are a couple of the pictures that I used it in, and I just think it tops it all off. It looks very cute in combination with the festive halter. It's such a perfect little photo shoot set. This next one is a little bit hard to explain for my non-Norwegian followers, but I'll try my best. So in Norway, there's a tradition to have some kind of a specially made Christmas series for children playing from the 1st of December to the 24th. One of the older ones that I grew up with and is really nostalgic to me is called Jurpmontoppen uh, and it follows a Nisse family, which although there's not a word for it in English, but anyways, one of the characters is called Jentungen and She's just iconic and this is kind of like a cosplay of her. So anyways, she's wearing her red mittens. Also, she has kind of a rustic looking dress and of course her iconic Santa hat. Honestly, I'd be down to explain the whole plot of this series, but I'll spare you guys the time and move on to the next item. And this set I've been very excited to show you guys. It is the draft logging set I made recently. So this is obviously a harness you use on usually draft horses to pull anything from logs to sleighs. So let's start with the bridle. I decided to keep it pretty simple. I didn't add the brow band because of his forelock and I thought I would make a halter to have underneath it. So that's why I didn't make a nose band. I haven't gotten to making the halter yet because I'm waiting for materials. But anyways, it has a butterfly bit with a curb chain. I actually got this tan leather die for Christmas and I used it for this set and I loved how it looked. So I'm super excited to use it for more sets. The reins run from the bit through this ring on the collar, then through this other ring on this piece, I'm not sure what's called, and then they turn into rope. I was quite relieved to find out that these types of reins can be made of rope because thinning like a, I don't know, 35 centimeter long piece of leather is not something I'd like to do. Anyways, let's have a look at the harness itself. So we have the upper 
and the lower hem straps. The collar body or the padding is connected to the hems with these tiny straps and buckles. And there's also this looser strap that connects the collar to the back pads. This thicker band is called the tug strap and it connects to this jump ring which again connects to the belly strap and the strap underneath that is not connected is called the girth band. On top of the back pads we have these metal things called tarots and these were really difficult to make. I am honestly very very proud of them. They are fully functioning and the arch which connects both of them is fully movable so the back pads should fit any horse. The side strap goes all the way around the horse's butt and connects on the other side. And then over here we have the back straps which crisscross on top. For a little added flair, I added some jingle bells which is totally unnecessary but I thought it would look very cute and indeed. We also have this little dangling wooden fastener and this goes into the draft bar which is this metal piece. And this basically secures anything you want the horse to drag. This specific harness is a European one. So while making this, I read about it mostly in Norwegian. So if the terminology I use isn't correct, well, that's why. But besides that, I had so much fun making this harness. And it was really fun finding out about the different pieces and making it as accurate as possible. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. To go along with the harness, I made this log pulling chain, which is so much fun to use for photo shoots. So I made this wood clamp kind of thing, and I had to do some thinking on how I would make it work, but in the end it turned out great and it's very functional. I wanted it to look aged and old, so I tried to make it rust by putting it in vinegar and salt, but it only worked on certain pieces. So I had to use some paint and just paint on the rust, but I think it looks pretty convincing. And the ends of the chains have these clips that just clip onto the harness. In addition to that, I also made a sleigh for the harness. This one is inspired by Mathilde Brandt on Instagram. She and her horse Evid were driving with this kind of sleigh and harness and I was really inspired by that. I tried my best to make this piece of faux fur look like a reindeer skin. I think I somewhat succeeded although it looks a little bit strange. I'm pretty happy with the sleigh. I think it could have been better but what I'm really happy with is the worn look. I think that really adds to the realism. As you maybe can imagine, it was a little bit of a pain to make this way. It took a while to bend the wood and I had to be patient, but I'm pretty happy with it. I wouldn't say I'm super happy with it. There's something that I just can't nail down that I'm not super pleased with. Um, but I'm excited to take some pictures when it when the situation arises. That was the last of the harness things. So next up is this little cute bonnet and saddle pad set. They're supposed to look like they're from the brand, um... Cavalleria Toscana. As I've mentioned before, I'm just not that great with fabric stuff. Uh, it tends to not be super durable and it doesn't fit amazingly on the horse. So I wish I was better at it, but I just can't seem to get it right. I haven't used this one at all because it turned out kind of clumpy under the bridle. I really wish I could crochet one, that would be so amazing, but alas, I don't know how to do that. Then there's the saddle pad, which again, I think it looks alright, but there are just so many better ones out there, and it's just not very durable. Functionality and durability is something I kind of have to juggle when I'm making, for example, bridles, but I shouldn't have to do that for saddle pads. They're not super intricate. They're just a solid piece of fabric, so I don't know what's my problem, but I just can't get them right. <laughs> Sorry for the sudden shift in quality. I had to film this a while ago on my old phone because I was sending this set off to my hobby pal. 
I made this western trail set for a trade I am doing with Stiarna model horses. Actually, I did it a while ago. I've received my wonderful repaint and she has received this set. She requested a wheel hackamore and I've never made specifically this type, but it was actually a lot of fun and I want to make one for myself. It has adjustable buckles on both sides, of course. It has a throat latch by the eye and also I'm really proud of the nose band. Both of the reins are attached with clips. Now for the saddle. It was actually a pretty new experience for me. You guys might know I don't make a bunch of western saddles. I'm not exactly sure why, it just doesn't appeal to me as much. But I'm really really happy with this one and low-key wish I could keep it because it looks so good on this mule boy. It's supposed to resemble an endurance saddle and I really like that style to be honest, so I better make another one for myself. Both of the stirrups are adjustable with a buckle underneath here. And the girth is supposed to look like a nylon girth with a fleece padding and it has this cute little logo. The saddle pad is a very very simple navy blue one, it's not very special at all. But overall, I'm very happy with this set. I think it's a really cool combination and I hope Sterna Model Horses is enjoying it. Now back to better video quality. This is actually the most recent tack item I've made. It is a combination halter and bridle. But wait, isn't that a custom? Well, yes, it is. This is my most recent custom on the model Gustav. I'll leave a link to where you can buy the base model in the description. Anyways, I've customized the neck and both of the back legs, plus a bit of the tail, and also the forelock and the ears. And I'm just so happy with this big boy. He looks so gentle and I'm super excited to paint him. I decided to not make a video on his process just because I didn't feel like it, but I assure you I will feature him when he's done in future videos. Anyways, back to the actual tag piece. So as I mentioned, this is a combination halter, so it is in and of itself a halter, but it has these two jump rings that the straps with bits attached to them attach to. I really like the colors I chose for this one. Also, I added the signature little tag onto the ring here, and as well as a horse logo tag. Both the nose band and the crown piece have padding, which I think makes it look a bit more high quality. The reins are made to look like rope and they clip onto the bit. I think these colors and everything will really suit him when he gets his bay color. You might have seen this last tag set in my latest video. This is a stable set for my foal. I actually don't have a name for him yet. I was thinking maybe Pinocchio would be cute, but I don't know. Anyways, I made this teeny tiny foal halter for him. I used such thin wire to make all the buckles and all of them are fully adjustable and you actually need to open them to get it on and off. One thing I saw a lot on full halters is this little leather lead rope thing. I'm not sure what it is, maybe it's just a short lead rope, can anyone tell me? Since it is winter and it's very cold here in Norway, I made him a teeny tiny fleece blanket. It doesn't have any closures up front, it just slips over the head. It has a white lining and a, an adjustable belly strap. I have to quickly thank all you guys who watched my latest video. It absolutely blew up and I'm so grateful for all the support, so thank you very much. The last item is not a tack piece, but I thought I would let you guys in on a little secret that's not really a secret because I've been talking about it on Instagram, but I have received my first ever resin. I bought this guy back in January and he actually arrived earlier than I had expected. I look at him as a cute little lazy lesson pony that just can't be bothered with all these kids. He's really, really adorable and 
I will 100% make a process video on him, so I hope you guys will look forward to that. If you want to buy one for yourself, I believe they are still available, so I will leave a link down below. I've never really been a big spender when it comes to this hobby, or at least not in like big quantities. I never spent like a lot of money on one horse, so this one is definitely a very small horse, but a very expensive one. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through, I really do appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that if you want more content like this. I really can't wait to make the video where I repaint the resin, I hope you guys are stoked for that, just like I am. Comment down below what videos you'd like to see in the future, and maybe what tack piece from this video was your favorite. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!